uh, for the new viewers and for the old ones, I think we thought I thought we'd go down memory lane and introduce you to Karula because I think a lot of the new viewers uh, haven't seen her. Unfortunately, she hasn't been seen in the last six months, so it's not boding well because obviously there's a lot of uh, activity uh, guide-wise out in the Sabi Sands. So someone should have seen her. Uh, even when her mother Safari was around, she would stick fairly close to a lodge. Uh, she only had one eye. She had this um, sort of strange-looking, bulging blue eye. Um, but she still fared until 19 years old. Um, but she was still being seen quite regularly. And then all of a sudden she stopped being seen. So it's very difficult to actually know exactly what happens to these cats. Obviously, we see them a snapshot of their life. So we can't just walk out into the bush and, and stumble across them, uh, even when they're alive. So it's uh, even more difficult if they have perished. Um, so unfortunately, it does sound like... Um, I me mean, may, maybe she survived maybe she will pop up somewhere it has happened with other leopards um, but as i say it doesn't it's not sounding great for her but obviously she's left behind an amazing legacy and it's been fantastic to catch up with them so i thought maybe let's meet her for those of you who have never met her uh, to join on one of the drives that was just absolutely incredible and we actually wrote a paper about this particular drive and one that Sebastian actually took so we might have a chance to see that clip as well because I, we're seeing some of those interactions with members of the family even now so I thought it'd be quite interesting for the um, new viewers to maybe see it. So if we can cue the clip hopefully you'll be able to see, unfortunately you get my hat in the way right at the beginning um, <laughs> so sorry for that but you do get to see four leopards in one shot so there we go uh, so you get to see so Karula's actually at the top of the screen the two cubs are the ones walking and then Karula's mate of choice at that stage Yambili Ordan is actually just opposite her uh, unfortunately the footage is obviously not the quality that it is nowadays uh, and that is obviously one of the big improvements that we've had but there's Karula and uh, obviously sort of trying to entice Yambili Ordan to uh, partake in uh, possibly uh, mating um, but yes quite quite amazing so you can't quite see the wow across her forehead but Yambili Ordan has the okay, ring of spots everybody. around his I eye and uh, in the uh, Induna really actually does Yambili have Yambili that ring of place. spots or I'm, I'm not sure if Induna's still <laughs> around I haven't heard amazing. his name but I think he got the ring of spots above his height from his father, but uh, there you go. Yeah, you might be able to work out the heart above the eyes on Yambili Ordan, and that's Yambili is supposed to mean heart. That's where he got his name from, and he came from the Jordan Dam. So that is who we believe the father is of uh, the second set of cubs and the, the third set of cubs. So that will be Mishun and Induna, the third set of cubs. And then that will also be, uh, let me think, Shavi, Shavinzi and Shavambalana. That was the two cubs that were actually on that clip that was just playing there. So hopefully that uh, puts a face to the name, if that makes sense. And uh, seeing Karu there as well. And I believe there's a little bit more of uh, the cubs playing uh, of that clip as well. Um, but as I say, we actually, we up until that, uh, we hadn't really uh, experienced the male actually interacting with the cubs. And as I said before, we, we kind of think it's because there's such a high density of kill other cubs. Um, and that's to basically get the females back into estrus a lot sooner than what they would if the cubs were, st were to stay with her. And they can stay with her for a year, up to a year and a half, maybe longer. I mean, Mishan and Duna stayed with Karula for a, a good couple of years before they uh, moved on. And Duna actually stayed in the area. Uh, and I'm wondering, actually, if we could maybe play that uh, clip of Enduna, Yambili Ordan, and the two cubs, because uh, I think we've managed to find that clip as well, so we might be able to play that for you. Um, but I, as I say, I wanted to kind of show you that it has been happening, and, you know, the legacy is here, and we're seeing these interactions. Um, so, yeah, so I think we can actually view that clip of... So it'll be Yambili Ordan again, the father, who we believe is the father, and the... Three year old son in Duna. Oh, this is the two cubs playing. Sorry, this is uh, Shavinzi and Shavambalana actually playing 
in the tree. So that was just following on from the other clip. Oh, <laughs> no problem. Um, so yeah, so uh, we've got a very unusual situation because I say male leopards are supposed to, once they've grown up after about two, year and a half, two years old, they're supposed to move away. And that's supposed to avoid inbreeding with their, their sisters, their mothers. But as I say, there's not as many territories around. They've, they've all been taken. And because we've got such a high leopard density, I'm wondering if they're being tolerated uh, a lot longer uh, because they are family. And as I say, even by the fathers who we believe are the fathers, maybe the, the males believe they're their father. And that's possibly why we, we're having this tolerance of the younger males. So I think we do have the right clip this time. Um, so we'll see if we can actually see that. And the the opening clip should be the male, that's it. So we've got the umbilical done, uh, the, the father on the right of the clip, and we've got uh, in Duna, the three-year-old son on the left. And you can see how close they are. Now, I can't remember if he actually turns around to look at us, but you might be able to see that ring of spots over his eye if he does. And as I say, Seb was actually driving that day, and I was on camera, and we both were just going crazy. We, so here we go. This is uh, the youngster. This is uh, Shivan Balana. So this is the year-old cup coming in past his three-year-old brother. And you can see his three-year-old brother's not so keen. <laughs> but you can see he doesn't lash out. And I'm, I'm still, I'm so intrigued at why Shivan Balana decided to come and sit by him. But it, as I say, a little bit having his nose pushed out of joint, but then you'll see he actually sits back down again. Yeah, I'm sorry. I need and there's to a little bit of tetchiness between them, but there's no actual um, pause or anything like that clashing. Really quite amazing. So again, we actually added this to the paper. <laughs> now in Duna, you might actually notice yeah, Hosanna you know. actually has that very heavy makeup underneath his eye. And I think I was saying this the other day, I think in Duna actually uh, has similar markings to his younger brother. And the bat wing underneath his eye on the right, that's how we used to yeah, ID him. It's amazing. Hi, Vicky, a new viewer, also saying, realising how special these multi-leopard sightings actually are. And it really is. As I say, leopards are thought to be solitary, but we're, we're proving that wrong. <laughs> and so you can see they actually settle down together. There's no more aggression from them. Um, so, yeah, really some, some bizarre behaviour. And that's why we thought, you know what, we need to get it out there sightings as well because as I say it's not normal leopard behavior if you read the books like as well I keep saying these leopards don't read the books no animal reads the books <laughs> they do what they want to do and the problem is obviously we've had uh, oh, a few tears yeah there are a few tears from from a few people um, and as I say it is very sad but I still think absolutely amazing that we've got such a wonderful legacy to be following and as I say they, we are seeing these interactions and that's why to, to actually share this with people um, and maybe change what is known about uh, the leopards uh, and as I say you guys are actually on this journey with us. This is what I really love about Safari Live and what we do. We are changing what is known about these animals by showing it live. You know, we're not cutting, we're not editing. It is all there as it's, as it's like I keep saying, as it's unfolding, because that for me is something so special because you really get to understand why an animal has done something. When it's edited and it's clipped, you might not get the, what happened before, what happened afterwards. You're just seeing the bit in the middle and seeing the, the bits either side are very, very important. And as I say, just... We've actually had uh, multiple leopard sightings recently, I believe. Um, I think there was the, the there's been the kill with I think Tandy, Tamba, and Hosanna actually on the same kill together. Um, and again, Hosanna is the the fifth cub of Karula. Uh, Tandy is the first cub, so I think they obviously have met. Um, we've seen them together, but maybe even previous to that, they might have met with Karula. You never know. And obviously. Uh, 
Tamba interacting with Hosanna as well, so knowing each other. They are cousins. So perhaps there's that familiar smell amongst the family group. Who knows? But because this is so new, it's still literally at the cutting edge of science. Really quite amazing. So I think we're going to cut back to Tristan and see uh, how Shadow, I think, possibly is... Oh, we're going to the Joan. Sorry. 